Okay, good morning everybody. Welcome to today, today's session. Uh, my name is Lauri Solisma. I'm the team manager at the Geological Survey of Finland and I'm also the project manager of Closiomatic. And here beside me is uh, Philip Mittelstedt from DMT, Tommy Kauppila from GTK and Gal Bellenfant from BRGM. So I will first start to uh, do some short introduction to the project and tell about added value for the customers. Let's change the slide. So some practicalities first. All microphones are closed. Uh, questions will be answered at the end of the questions and answer section. You can write your questions to the questions box, which is visible only to us organizers. And you also can raise your hand. The webinar is being recorded. And summary of the presentations will be placed to our website, closiomatic.com, after the webinar. And you can also ask questions afterwards by email, and the contact info will be at the end of the presentations or at the beginning, as mine was. A few words about the project. This Closiomatic project is an EIT raw materials funded upscaling project. Uh, it lasted four years. It was continued by one year because of the COVID, and in this ends this year. The budget was approximately 1.4 million euros, and uh, our partner was uh, Geological Survey of Finland. Uh, we were the lead partner. Then the French Geological Survey, BRGM, uh, DMT, a global engineering company, M Solutions, which is a ICT company from Finland and Hanugane Mining that gave us some insights from the industry's perspective. We were aiming at uh, to create something that solves these three pro problems in the project. The first one was that there are big social, environmental and financial risks that are related to mine closure planning. And mine closure is a process, uh, it's a complex management challenge, and we thought that it could be done more efficiently. And there is also lack of dedicated long-term data management solution for mine closure. And we created product, Closiomatic software for the industry and authorities. And this adds efficiency, predictability and compliance and standardization to your mine closure and life of manage, mine management approach. And next, we have some presentations from our project team. Uh, first online is Tommy Kaupila, research professor from Geological Survey of Finland, and he will tell us some insights about why digital mine closure management is important. After Tommy, there will be a jurisdiction specific adaptation demo of the Western Australian version by Philip Mittelstadt. After that, you can present some questions and finally some closing remarks so please tell me i will put you in the presenter mode and you can go ahead thanks lauri let me select my screen so ladies and gentlemen as an introduction to the closure management software that will be presented later. Let's take a look at why should we have a digital mine closure management tool in the first place. Like Lauri said, my name is Tommy Kauppila. Mine closure is important. The actual closure is important, as we all know, for the environment. The reason for this is that the post-closure environmental legacy may actually be the most significant impact of the whole operation. So the impacts, environmental impacts of mining might not be that uh, severe during the actual operation, but they may arise a decade after the closure of the mine if the closure is not done properly. Then mine closure is important for the operator uh, because it costs a lot to close a mine. And oftentimes nowadays in most jurisdictions, these costs are at least partly covered by financial sureties and guarantees. And 
in addition to the closure itself, the closure activities itself, even the post mining expenses can be substantial in the long term. Even the monitoring alone that you need to do after the closure costs a lot, especially if the closure is not done properly. And all of this uh, leads to uh, reputational risks and uh, risks with the social license to operate, meaning the local acceptance. Now, mine closure is also important for the region where the mine is, because when a mine comes to a region and then when it finally closes, it affects the regional economy, employment and uh, demography, because people will first move in and then they may move out if the closure is not done properly. And with the people, the demand for services changes. However, mine sites and the workforce they also provide a wealth of opportunity a wealth of opportunities for the for the post mining period for the region and these should be embraced in the process and of course mine closure is important for sustainability because we want to minimize the losses of natural and social capital while we are closing the mine but we also want to maximize the positive legacy of the project Okay, so I can't click the space bar because it mutes me. Now, modern mine closure. Uh, the first bullet there is the um, classical definition of mine closure added with some extra stuff in green. So modern mine closure aims at managing the life of project impacts bringing all parts of the mine site to a safe and physically, chemically and biologically stable state, which facilitates the planned post mining land uses and aims at maximizing positive legacy of the project. This is actually very important. Therefore, the classical two uh, activities of mine closure, meaning decommissioning and reclamation, they must be accompanied with the third bullet, this impacts and opportunities management, where you work with the stakeholders and make sure that the lifetime negative impacts of the mining project are minimized and sustainable benefits are maximized. And for the reclamation, we oftentimes talk about reclamation, not restoration, because we what we want to do is we want to reclaim the mine site for the plant, high value sustainable post mining land uses because these are the land uses that actually help you maximizing the uh, long lasting positive legacy from from the mining project now the way it's done nowadays it's done with the continuous progressive closure paradigm that's the current norm uh, it spans the whole life of the mining project and it's actually the longest process in the whole mining project because it starts very early in the project latest in the early feasibility phases actually even earlier if you count the baseline studies uh, and baseline collection of data in there and it lasts well into the post closure period so when everyone else has gone away there are still some closure activities going on. Um, despite this progressive nature, which aims at the uh, end vision, a site must also be demonstrably closable at all times. Because many times, unfortunately, close prematurely, and you need to have a plan for that as well. Uh, this continuous closure has several benefits over, over this traditional only at the end closure because this concept emphasizes this widely agreed planning of the post-closure land uses of the site or any use is not just land use but any any useful uses of the site whatever that may be it's also wise to close what you can as you go because at that time you will have your personnel and equipment present you will have your organization in place and cash flow present. And, and uh, especially this organization being present part is important because oftentimes for the sureties, for instance, there is 30% extra funding 
calculated in these sureties and guarantees just to set up the organization to close the mine. <clears throat> then this paradigm in, uh, includes this concept of continuously learning about your site and your closure. It's called continuous reduction of unknowns and continuous reduction of risks related to closure. And this is done by deliberately uh, learning from your site. And then when you close, as you go, you also learn about your planned closure activities, what works and what doesn't work. And one benefit, which is actually crucial to this uh, continuous closure is that you want to minimize the amount of environmental liabilities that you have open at any given time. And this is partly because of the sureties and guarantees. So you, you don't want to have, let's say, poor uh, waste rock facilities unmanaged at any given time. You only want to have one that's to give you a concrete example. And then this um, continuous closure also offers you the, the possibility to integrate your closure activities with your mining stages, which means that you can make it easy on yourself if you get it right. And you can do things, things when they are the easiest to do or when they are the most beneficial for the mining stages. Now, mine closure needs a vision. This is what is oftentimes lacking, but this is actually very useful um, to guide all planning. There should be a vision of this post-closure land uses, hopefully beneficial uses of the site and the added value that can be gained. So in those, those pictures, you can see three examples of um, of designs that are still just designs, and then two examples of a one of a zip line park, a zip world from Wales, and and buildings or residential buildings built in a in a quarry. That's probably not a mine; it's probably a dimension stone quarry in Jordan. Uh, it's important for external stakeholders to see that we are actually this project is actually going somewhere. It has a start, it has an end, and it will have a positive legacy at the end. It's important for the mining project because then you know what you're aiming at. But these visions should survive changes in the project, project ownership and project management. And of course, they will evolve as the world changes, especially if it's a long mining project. So because of all of this, Mine closure is a long, complex process. So on the right, you will see a hypothetical uh, mining project that starts from an exploration phase, going into the feasibility phases, and then finally constructing the mine and changes in the operation, a current maintenance period, uh, and then finally a decision to close and the final, final closure activities, and then the post-closure period. So it starts very early in the project. It involves a lot of uh, internal and external stakeholders that all need to align for a best outcome. It involves considerable costs and liabilities, and they are in the increase actually nowadays. It's also a public administrative process because the authorities want mines to close their mines properly. Uh, the norms, there are norms and guidelines and standards, but they are scattered around the world. So there is no single easy norm to follow. It involves this continuous reduction of unknowns and learning about your site, and you need to put that information somewhere. Then there is this pro uh, progressive closure that it happens in stages, and you also want to operate for closure. This means that you don't want to mess with your closure objectives by doing something silly in your other operations of the mine. It's a multidisciplinary effort, so not a single discipline can actually do it. It requires all sorts of experts 
to get it right, it should be integrated with the life of mine and the life of mine planning for cost savings and best outcomes. And all of the time it accumulates a lot of data and documents. And like I said, it needs to cha uh, survive changes in ownership and survive changes in management so that the, uh, the progress that has already been made doesn't get lost. And oftentimes there are these unplanned closures and temporary cessations and the long post-closure phase. So it's a very complex uh, thing to manage. Therefore, we oftentimes have a plan. Most mines have a closure management plan, maybe because the authorities tell you to have one. And we need a plan and everyone needs plans of uniform high quality. And uh, these CMPs, these closure management plans, they are usually paper documents with a lot of um, um, appendices and studies and they are paper documents that are stored in folders and then they are put on the shelf and it's so easy to put it there and then forget about it until it's time to update it for the authorities. But closure needs to be managed every day. So in addition to these official closure management plans that you give to the authorities, you should have a more detailed, up-to-date in-house closure management plan right from the start of the project. Because we don't do this for the authorities alone. And you spend hundreds of thousands or at least tens of thousands of euros anyways to get that plan. So might as well, so you might as well use it for something useful. And it evolves over the years from an early conceptual plan where many things are either uncertain or even incorrect to a very detailed final plan when we finally know exactly how to, how to close this site. So to update the plan should be easy. And you need the version control and you need the change logs and you need the approval schedules and everything to make it work. And oftentimes there is this narrative part that you can see there on the right that says master plan, which is like a, it's a text that explains how we plan to close these and these and these uh, facilities of our uh, mine. And then there is the action plan, which contains the detailed actions, what we actually plan to do to achieve what has been described in the master plan. But we still need to produce also these administrative documents because the authorities want that. And <clears throat> oftentimes um, in certain jurisdictions, they have published guidelines, like how do they want to have their closure management plans. And these typically also have a prescribed table of contents like this. These are the things that need to be uh, contained in the CMP that you deliver to the authorities. There is no such thing in Finland, but in many jurisdictions there are. And oftentimes and increasingly the authorities are going digital. So we should, the mining industry should go digital as well. And like I said, these uh, closure management plans, when you write it and when you finally use it for your daily activities, it's a collective effort. So many people should have easy access to the documents and to be able to use it then afterwards. So a paper folder uh, or papers in a folder, as you can imagine, is not the easiest way to manage that. Therefore, digital tools are preferable uh, to allow access for several persons in the company and even outside and consultants to the same plan. And all of the time, as you close and you learn about your site, you make studies, you commission studies, you need to put them where you can find them uh, with your closure management plan. <clears throat> and CMPs include actions that generate data, even if it's not to learn about your site, 
because there, there will be the original plans and designs of facilities and procurement documents related to that construction documents and inspection documents and everything that you may need 20 years from now when the time has come to close that particular facility you should have them at hand at the correct uh, place and in addition to that you have these long-term tests that you may have commissioned and trials and studies you you commissioned and and the monitoring reports that you use to learn more about your your site these should be easily accessible and available in the correct con uh, context hopefully and this is what it looks like so your uh, closure management plan the blue arrows in the at the top of the uh, mining time timeline they tell you to collect data and you collect data and all of all of the time data accumulates so and the the data bank becomes bigger and bigger as you learn about your site so it's actually possible or it actually would be good if the plan and the data so what you learn about your site would be in the same place now uh, closure is typically managed by dividing uh, your site to domains and these domains uh, are these they, they are both spatial and functional entities that you have a closure plan for and the whole mine closure then consists of of putting all these the closure plans for these for these domains together so a domain has its own closure objectives and land uses schedule and uh, methods responsible persons your cost estimate and planned actions and so on and all of these make up your full closure and you have the action plan so every plan or every section of your plan also consists of actions to fulfill your vision for that uh, section or domain and these actions have uh, start dates end dates responsible persons ex estimated costs and so on and documentation and these actions you can track start dates are we early are we late are we completed yet how much did it cost how much did we plan it that it should cost and you can group if you have a digital tool you can group these actions to track for instance like what's what are my tasks for next month if i'm a responsible person for closing something and how far has this domain uh, been closed already and with all this you can track the costs when you have estimated the costs and then you know uh, how much the closure actually cost these actions cost a detailed action plan with cost estimates it's it's the most accurate source of this information and this is the thing that your financial department will want to know they will actually want to know it at least four times a year if not monthly so to have a plan like this is your tool to give them these figures and then finally there is the continuity continuity is key in closure management and you need to be able to transfer this whole system to the next owners or the next management so that the um, the vision survives and what has already been done doesn't go into waste so to conclude a continuous closure is the is the best way to produce positive legacies from mining projects but this is a complex management challenge and it's a daily activity throughout the mining uh, project so digital tools can definitely support many critical features of the continuous mine closure process thank you thank you tommy very much a great presentation thank you and next we have uh, philip mittelstedt showing us the actual actual software so Please, Philip, as soon as you're ready. Okay, hello everybody. I think I am ready to go and uh, to show you the software that we produced during these um, four years. 
and it's a specific one because it shows an example of a jurisdiction jurisdiction specific adaptation because um my enclosure is is uh or the the requirements for for my enclosure plans in different um countries are often different as well and western australia uh, provides a good example of how it can be done so in a minute you are going to see a live presentation um of this jurisdiction specific version of closure matic as i said it's an example and closure matic and this is an important point can be tailored to your specific situation so whatever the case is whatever country you are in um on whichever uh legal conditions you have which structure you have for your official cmps this can be modified in closure matic um the example that I'm showing here contains information compiled from a publicly available and an accepted mine closure plan for the Norseman Gold project in Western Australia. And you can download it there from the MineDex website. And now comes a very important point. The project, the Norseman Gold project is, is real. It exists. Yeah, but um, everything that I'm going to show you um, about this project particularly costs, work hours, closure actions, um, uh, partly obligations, and, and, and uh, et cetera, et cetera. They're purely invented and do not reflect the actual situation at the Norseman Gold project. And in case of technical difficulties, well, don't stress. That is um, actually a note to myself. <laughs> um, but it also means, it's also generally applicable, I guess, and um, it means that I can show some screenshots and um, you can always request a demo um, via www.closurematic.com. So, and now um, I don't want to waste too much time. I want to show you the software. Um, this is Closurematic, what it looks like when you open it. And if you, you can see here, we've got the Norseman Gold project listed. And if you open this drop-down list, you show uh, it shows different names. You have the demo, CMP, DMT standard. Yeah, these, um, the Norseman project and uh, project in France. So obviously these names could be mine site names, any mine site. If you're a large uh, um, mining company with several operations, you can extend this list and have all your names here. Or if you're an authority um, uh, supervising several mine sites, you can also list them here. And when you click on these, you see that the closure plan sections here change. So that um, gives you an idea of um, the flexibility um, that closure Matic has in setting up here these closure plan sections. So, but I'll focus now on the um, Norseman Gold um, project. And I guess with um, any project, one of the first things you have to um, do is um, set up your closure domains. So I'll show you the closure domains that we have set up for the Norseman Gold project. Here they are, I think there's 22. Um, and this list gives you some basic information of these domains, the name, yeah. Uh, description, what is there, pit, uh, flood, burn, causeway, um, final land use, if it has been defined, um, obligations, if they have been defined, here it says see legal obligations register, I'll come back to that point in a minute, and here also plan completion date. And now, yeah, in some cases we have one, in some cases we don't, and I might want to try and figure out why and what is the case, so I'll open this for example then i can see okay this is the basic information there the completion date is missing but i've got a note here yeah um and then if i open it uh to be decided following stakeholder oh, okay then i know um we want to um finalize a completion date during 2022. so that's that and um just also to to show you the uh, concept, if I go onto this CMP, open the group view and the domains. I've got a different set of domains here, same information, but same principle that applies. Okay, back to the Northman project.
So what you can do here is open in view form, which you've just seen, or you can add a new one, which I'll just do right now. Um, I will call it test domain, uh, test facility, uh, give it a number, 99 obligations, non final land use forest and enter a completion date. Well, let's say tomorrow, close. And here, if I wanted to, I could um, add a note. Yeah. Um, again, I'll call it a uh, final completion date. Why tomorrow? And you can save it and this is how you can create your notes for other people also to look at here you could add documents for example um any type of document you like here i've got an obligations register so i'll open that one and there it's attached so if i if somebody reads this no obligations hey, can't be true um i can open the obligations register that i've created and find out um, if that is correct or not, as a mine manager, for instance. All right, um, I'll save and close this. And here it appears down there. Um, now, the next step you have to do is to set the location, and that's where you hit this button, and the map appears. So the Northman project is down here. I can go into satellite view. You can see some old mine workings here, but my my test domain, let's say it's right here in the middle of nowhere. I click the mouse and this flag appears. I hit set. And now I've set the location of my domain. And if I want to see all my domains, I can open a domain map here again. Um, I can choose between my different mine sites. So if I choose the DMT standard, there are my domains, there are the names. If I go to the Northman project, I can choose my domains here, they're all there. And I can see the list of domains and test domain is there, I'll click it. And now you might want to, you might think, okay, now which of these is it? I can open um, the locations toolbox and I can then label these things with the names and there I can see my test domain. Again, if I wanted to, I can switch to uh, this aerial image and all the other properties here, I can either add to the name, let's say final land use, ah, okay, forest, um obligations none can't be true uh, um, but it's just a demo and here i can see see legal obligations register or the plan completion date if i wanted to see that all right so if i scroll up here a little bit um there are also some more tools. We have some basic GIS functionality here where you can um, apply shape files. I can, for instance, see if I can load one. Um, where's my shape file? There it is. Open. And then my pit appears here for the HIV section. So I know it cons also consists of a waste truck uh, dump, that is this one here, and the Bundan Causeway there. Okay, so that is how you view and set up domains. And um, now uh, it's time to have a look at the actual closure plan sections here. 
So I'll start with this folder and open it. It's the site-wide mine closure plan 2020 for the Norseman Gold project. Um, and these things here we call templates, and they are templates, and they reflect the typical structure um, or required structure for the Western Australian um, official closure management plans. So this thing in Western Australia, every mining company will have to, every couple of years, submit a mine closure management plan with, with this structure. So, and I can, let's say, let's open this closure obligation and commitments template. And this is what templates look like. Um, you have uh, text fields with certain headings here, and it's important to note at this point that all this here is um, is, is editable and flexible. Yeah, you can we can adapt this also the same way as you can have different uh, sections here. You can also adapt these headings. Um, these headings have uh, a pop-up help so that you can see. Uh, quickly what is required for this section when it's empty. Now I've, I've compiled something in, in there already. And it also has uh, table structures down here. This is a um, typical example of a legal obligations register, which is also required in, a, in this or a similar format by the Western Australian um, guidelines. But you can also um, add different um, uh, templates and then start compiling these in here. So um, uh, yeah, I might give it a, a test, yeah, test document, uh, tenement M63XXX, facility, I don't know, another waste rock dump, it's a page number in here, and then you can have a comment. And this is all editable, so you can mark you can um uh yeah make it make it look nice in a certain way you can merge um uh merge cells as well so it's 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 quite a flexible thing and the advantage of of compiling a let's say legal obligations register in here is that um you can export um this whole document here um Let's say the Western Australian one. And these, these tables will then appear um, in an export version. So we'll just, just do this as a test. Now it uh, should be there. Export. And here it is. Yeah, the export is um, devoid of any um, pre-formatting. Yeah, you can um, do this on individual requirement. I mean, it's a cosmetic surgery. But all the information that you enter into the, um, into the templates is then exported here. And for instance, the first table that you see here is the checklist. Yeah, that is contained here in the cover page template down here. And this is also a requirement by the Western Australian um, guidelines. So um, yeah, again, you can use this, this word export then to draft your um, and format your um, official mine closure management plan. Okay, now um, the alternative to um, adding your legal obligations register here is you can um, add it, let's say, as a PDF. Yeah, you, you hit this button and you can um, open it here. Again, you have the functionality of adding notes. So, but that's not all that the templates can do. Um, we also have a um, some some things down here that I'd like to show you, and these are the guidance files. Um, 
So every template has a guidance file where uh, more detailed um, explanations are provided. In this case, um, we reference the official guidelines from the Western Australian um, Mines and Industry Regulation and Safety Department. Um, so and this is uh, flexible, adaptable to any jurisdiction. Yeah, we can um, set up these guidelines for you. Um, we can take your guidelines and put them into these templates. Um, so um, anything goes, and in this way we can um, tailor closure metric to your specific circumstances. So yes, it's here you can see the um, the the required um, table formats which we can implement in closure metric as just shown, and we provide links to relevant um, uh, uh, legislation to relevant guidelines in in Western Australia. Um, and um, so the user can, when he opens these guidance files, um, yeah, find a lot of information on what is required in this particular section of the closure plan. Okay, so another example of a template is the closure risk assessment. Um, here, what you can see here is that I've uh, I've linked an image to a section. Uh, the way that goes is um, you upload an, an image, a JPEG or whatever. Um, this way, yeah, you could add anything anything you like, um, which is I've, what I've done already. And then you can actually uh, link the document to a field. And I'll now link it also to the first section Great links, and there it is. Yeah, now I've got it twice, but that's a way how you can um, uh, uh, assign certain images to certain sections, and also these then appear in the. Uh, can't see it right now. The images then also appear in the um, in the export version. Um, in the guidance file here of the risk assessment, um, it is also particularly noteworthy because it's an important part of every closure plan that um, you have this this image, this matrix, um, and you have um, uh, detailed explanations on how to compile this template. Uh, and also you have the, um, uh, the table structure required by the Western Australian authorities. Here. Okay, so now I have shown you um, how to create the domains, um, show them on a map, how to attach uh, documents, uh, the possibility to add and edit tables in the templates, the pop-up and the guidance files, and, and now I'd like to shift to another um, aspect, which is the creation of um, actions and working with these. So. Um, here you can find the actions button. You can see I've, um, I've got five actions listed here. You can click on it. And there you can see, okay, there are five actions. Yeah, some of them are completed. Yeah, some of them have not started yet, are quite new here. The status is not clear. Um, there is uh, the possibility of uh, filtering these. If you imagine that um, you, have, you have dozens and dozens of actions here and you can create actions with um, this button here. And I will call it, I don't know, um, hv1, that's my domain name, test risk assessment action. Um, it's assigned to the Northman Gold CMP also. Um, and uh, here you can enter an action type. You can see here only one. I'll come back to um, this point in a minute uh, to, to explain that in a bit more, more detail. Then you have different action types. Also, this is entirely flexible. You can decide as a user um, which ones you want to need, or which, which action types you need. So here I'm going to choose risk assessment. And then I'll say it starts. Um, 2022, take, I don't know, um, 
I can add a responsibility up here. So in this case, I'll say it's uh, Lowry's responsibility. Um, you can also enter here action user groups. And this is, we haven't defined it for the Norseman project, but this is um, an interesting point. Because uh, an action user group is a group of people who should have access to this particular action. Um, these could be um, people from your organization or potentially also people from um, external people, consultants or something. So uh, with this functionality, you as a manager of this particular site have um, control on who you would like to have working on this particular action. You can enter the status. Also, this is totally flexible. Um, I'll say it's a new one. You can add a description, yeah, uh, test action comments if you want and down here um, you can enter the completion per, uh, percentage what costs you expect and how many hours you expect to work on it and um, again I would like to emphasize that all this for the Norseman project is totally invented and does not reflect anything happening there at that particular site save and close the action and then you can see here that the actions have been updated. So now you've got six actions for the risk assessment. So now you have this tab up here. Um, and here, if I open all actions, um, you can see all the actions that I've, I have, all the invented actions that I have created. Yeah, I, I was, um, I tried my best to make these numbers look pretty ridiculous. I hope you notice. So um, here again, you have a list, and um, also you have the um, possibility to filter these um, actions. So um, if I add here, contains. Um, HV1, which is one of my domains, as you remember, I can quickly see all the actions that are associated to this particular domain. So then this appears in blue, that means there's a filter on, so I want to clear the filter because I want to show all actions. There we have them again. Um, Of course, if I if I switch here to let's say DMT standard, um, a different set of actions will apply. So again, this could be a different mine site, um, and you will see then then different um, actions. And and this is the point where I'd like to explain action type. Remember where uh, while creating action, I only had this one option. Now for this. For this project, we have we have created several action types: uh, demo action, engagement, execution, and each of these um, have here different actions assigned. Yeah. Um, so if I go to monitoring, there will be data monitoring, fish monitoring, inspection study. So that's a way of um, when you think about it as a manager, you can um, design how you would like to structure. Um, your uh, particular actions in a in a particular way. So back to the Norseman project again. Also here I showed you the filtering possibility. You have um, here the description and you can then drag and drop this into this green field and you'll get an overview um, by description. So now I know, okay, I've got four monitoring actions, count four. I've got the cost here and the hours um, allocated to it. I can open this here and it gives you, um, in this case, all of them have been completed. So I've got nothing much to do, which is a, a nice thing. Uh, again, here I can also Yeah, sort by by the action type. Other, I can find them here as well. Okay, the next thing is that we also then take this information and put it into an action scheduler. Um, 
So what you see here is you can scroll along. The blue line here shows the current day. And here you can see the actions. Uh, it's a study, a risk assessment. You can see the bar enters uh, completion. You can link actions to each other. Yeah, you can enter milestones at particular dates. If you um, open the toolbox here, you can um, define your intervals by entering, let's say, month, let's say, 12. Um, so you can have a, have a larger time period you can overview um, like this. Again, the blue line indicating where we are at the moment. Um, or let's say three, that means it shows three months past and three months into the front. Now, what you can do here as well, it looks a bit wild because um, you got you can say, okay, I want this contracting stuff at the bottom. You can um, also drag and drop and shift these things. You can um, take a close look at the action here, what you have actually entered no comments. Oh, look here, there's no responsibility added. Yeah, I'll do that straight away. Yeah, my responsibility status, yeah, uh, work ongoing. Um, save and close. So then that's quickly updated. And also um, these actions, remember I created them in a specific section. I'll link to a specific section and you can view the section here as well. Yeah, so you get detailed background information. This on financial provisioning. Maybe you have connected some documents to the section. They would appear then here. Let's see if I can find one. Um, oh, I'll try this one. Oh, still no documents attached, but I think you understand what I mean. So of course we can take all this um, information as well and, and analyze them and show a graphical um, visualization of these things. So this gives you a dashboard on um, what is happening or what has happened or what is going to happen in your mind site. Again, flexible, yeah. Again, um, you can get a quick overview of your different mind sites. Um, you can sort by um, action type, yeah, the different actions there and costs associated. So um, anything anything goes here and is, is possible. And as a manager, you really quickly get an idea of um, what you, uh, yeah, what costs are involved and, and um, how to analyze these things efficiently and quickly. Okay. So at this point, I have finished uh, the part on actions as well. Um, now I want to show the creation of a knowledge base. Um, so a knowledge base uh, is, is actually a requirement or it's a recommendation. It's strongly recommended by the Western Australian guidelines. You will find it in these guidelines that they recommend to create a base of knowledge for um, every single domain. And I'll show you how we can, we can achieve that. So I'll close all these for now. A domain map uh, group four. So as I've mentioned now a couple of times, then the templates here reflect the um, uh, the structure of a closure management plan in, in Western Australia, uh, which is defined by the Western Australian Mine Closure Guidelines. Now you can see this folder down here, monitoring. And so what, what exactly is this about? Well, I'm going to tell you. Um, so the drafting of the official CMPs is one thing. Yeah, and as also Tommy mentioned in his presentation, the other thing is that you as a manager want to have your own in-house plan. You want to have an overview of all the data um, that is associated, whereas these things provide a summary and have a couple of attachments that you um, that are required by authorities. You as a manager want to know, okay, um, uh, who in person is going to perform the groundwater monitoring, what monitoring is performed at which site. 
um, all these kind of questions. So that's why you can um, expand this structure similar to what you can see here. We've got several folders in the Norseman Gold folder uh, project. We've only got the two um, to um, add more more detailed information. So, for example, monitoring here, just to give you an example. It provides only a, a, a brief overview of, um, in the official CMP, of, of what has to be done. Yeah, and um, if I look closely here, um, yeah, you've got different templates, and And so on. So it, it provides you an, um, um, an, an overview. And the monitoring folder down here goes into more detail than just that. So, for example, um, if I open the vibrations template, um, and if I have to do some vibrations monitoring during some kind of decommissioning work or something, I can um, enter here anything that I want. Um, initial situation, uh, several uh, protected buildings nearby. Um, methods, I can describe the methods here. And also these templates have then again associated guidance files which um, show more detailed um, uh, um, uh, knowledge on the topic of vibrations monitoring. So with, with uh, different, different types of references here and links to publicly um, developed um, or publicly available information sources. So when we've got these uh, uh, guidance files available for yeah, many, many templates, I'll show you later again. And for example, um, these templates have been compiled uh, by the Closiomatic team consortium. Um, one of the information sources that served as a basis for compiling these templates is the Mind Closure Wiki. So you can click on that link and it opens. And here you'll find all kinds of um, information here on um, monitoring and uh, yeah, lots of other topics relevant for Mind Closure. And more specifically, oops, wrong one, still wrong one. More specifically, if you want some more information on seismic monitoring or vibrations monitoring and how you can do it, um, there's another link provided here, for example, in Northern Germany. You know, all these things are uh, monitoring stations for vibration events. You can click on these and, um, yeah, have a look how how monitoring can be done. So very detailed information available in these um, other templates. Now the um, the the big advantage of of having uh, or back to the creation of an actual knowledge base. Now um, there is this button up here. It says set domain. So I can click it, um, open, and here comes my list of domains. Um, and the point is, I may have a domain that requires vibration monitoring, but I may have others that don't at all. Yeah. So in this case, I'll say, okay, my HV1 pit needs vibration monitoring, um, and I'll I'll tick it so it's linked to the monitoring. I'll go close. And I also know that in here, in the official part um, section, there is also some information contained on vibrations, let's say. So as an example, so I can go there as well and link it, uh, close. And now, um, if I go to the um, what was it, I think here, to the group view, this appears, which means links. Yeah. And if I open it, there appears the two uh, sections that I've just linked. So in that way, you can link all the contextual information to a um, certain template. You can link the template to a domain and create your base of knowledge. 
Um, and in fact, this the use of closure matic then um, has uh, another advantage because you have this section on management of information and data. And basically in here, you could write something like, this CMP and its associated data has been created by and is managed with ClojureMatic, um, digital tool for mine closure management. Okay, so that was the software demonstration. The summary is um, that the demonstration that I just presented shows that a jurisdiction specific adaptation is possible. Um, we can do it wherever necessary, um, wherever you would like. Um, and that the creation of a knowledge base for individual domains or features will ensure data continuity, particularly um, also as Tommy mentioned in this presentation, changes in management and ownership. Um, these things can be transferred during long lasting closure processes. So, and if you are interested in the full closure matic experience, if you like what you see and you want to be part of this, um, of this uh, ClojureMatic journey. Well, ClojureMatic can be purchased in, in predefined versions um, and or with um, individual customization, which includes then the individual template structure, guidance files, tools, and functionalities, uh, compiling existing data into, um, into, into the system. Yeah, for instance, you have a, a bunch of um, closure data already at hand, yeah, we can take it for you, we can work together with you and set closure matic up so that it works how you would like to have it to work. Yeah. Uh, several installation options are possible, cloud hosted on own SQL servers, so it can be absolutely safe, particularly um, authorities would like to have it on their own servers, that is all doable. Um, you just need to talk to us. So now I'm at the end of my presentation. Um, I'd like to say thank you to the audience for um, taking your time and looking at this. I hope you liked what you saw. And please don't hesitate to contact either me personally directly or any of uh, the ClojureMatic team from GTK, BHM, M Solutions via www.closurematic.com. Thank you. Thank you, Philip. That was really, really good and thorough and interesting interesting demo demo of the closure matic mm -hmm. and now i think we can we can move to the questions questions and answer section and if gail and tommy you could also put on your cameras and first i think we have hakan arden has raised his hand so if somebody could open his microphone so please um thank you very much indeed that was an excellent um, presentation from both speakers um that was really illuminating uh for someone like me um coming to the table quite late but understanding exactly what's going on in terms of the the, the purpose as well as the 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 means and, and how bit uh, my question is basically um a, a simple one is there any way to um, or is there any difference between um, the, the companies uh, their own environment and social management plan and uh, this one because um, I can see the similarities or is this uh, is this can this be called um, both environmental and social management plan plus the the, the closure because the end, the end purpose is the closure, but um, I can see the, the similarities in terms of environmental and social management, like the stakeholders engagement and monitoring activities, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, um, are we creating a double system here, or is it basically functioning for both purposes? Okay, I think I can answer that question um, um, the uh, bottom line there is is that um, closure matic is as you saw customizable yeah you, you can create the sections um, um, as you like and they can also reflect environmental and social management of course yeah for that purpose if you if you like and if, if I may add that uh, 
the original aim of Closure Matic, of course, was closure only. But as closure, like I showed in my presentation, it has this this vision of maximizing the uh, regional benefits as well. Uh, so the Philip was only showing the the Western Australian templates, which is an official uh, closure management plan and not so very detailed. Whereas uh, the closure matic system has close to 200 templates and and many of them include these let's say biodiversity management stakeholder engagement uh, social and re regional e economic issues and so on and so on so so it has a lot of those templates but it has been written with uh, closure in mind so it has a closure context uh, context but there is no reason why we couldn't actually use it for for other purposes as well. Thank you very much for clarifying this because um, um, I'll be going to one of these uh, uh, potential uh, customers next week and then uh, make the sales pitch on that one. And uh, the, the my sales pitch is going to be uh, this is a you know both uh, environmental and social management plan plus the closure the ultimate. Um, aim for the mine operation to to be considered, as you, Tommy, uh, indicated. You know, it, it has to be planned in advance so that you know, the end results can be achieved uh, in planning stages. And uh, for this reason, I think you know um, we've got a quite a good competitive uh, package here. And my colleague and I are watching the presentation here. We were just discussing. This, this could be also a, a good tool for the ministry officials to, to consider uh, on, on individual mine sites that you know, you know, this is uh, a, a comprehensive approach to, to mine closure. And uh, if we could convince the ministry officials that you know, this is the, the A product or D product that, uh, that can be implemented in their ranks, and then this this could be cascaded to other operations around Turkey. So obviously this is a long-term plan, which which requires significant effort and the marketing activity. But I think this may be a doable thing as well. Just a thought for your your yourselves as well to, to consider. Thanks. Thank you. Hakan. I don't no, know if you can still sh see my screen. Um, the point I wanted to make is can can you s still see my screen the, the yeah, closure matic? yes yeah um so we yes we've got one folder here the monitoring but as tommy mentioned um we have like this environmental baseline studies package and it contains many templates here and all of them with guidance files and pop-up helps and and the possibility to associate data um, you've got the environmental risk assessment templates here, stakeholder engagement. So we've got many, many things that we can add there. And this is um, individual customization. So what the what the client wants, um, I guess we can provide. Yeah, and I, I have to add that, for example, the green transition and minerals and their need in the climate, in the battle against climate change and mining's impact on the loss of biodiversity and EU's global gateway and all these kind of stuff. So controlling mine closure is critical in the in the poorer areas with poorer legislation. And I think this has big opportunities to be used in many purposes in developed, developed countries and in, in also the not so developed. And I think the next next question will be from Remy Pelon. Can you hear me? Sorry. Yes, yeah, now we can. can hear you. All right. Okay. Sorry. No. Thanks so much for for the presentation. This was really interesting. And thanks, Philip, for the uh, uh, invitation. Uh, no, I just had a, like a comment and, and a question, question mixed. Uh, it's the applicability of this tool to the coal uh, mine closure. I mean, as you said, it, it can probably be customized to anything you want, but uh, the coal mines are most of the time ancient operations, right? <clears throat> uh, 
with a long history and long liability. So maybe the data doesn't exist, or maybe it's hard to just get started in the middle of the river, if you want, with such a new tool. So I just don't, I, I just want to, your thoughts about the applicability of this to the whole agenda on, on coal mine closure, which is becoming so huge. You know, each time now people talk about mine closure, they actually think coal mine closure. So yeah, I guess it's a comment and a question mix. Thanks, please. I, I think I can, um comment and answer on that question. So thank you, Remy, for that uh, for that remark. Um, as you know, we are based in Essen, which is a closed mining region. Um, and um, we, we are heavily involved in uh, coal mine closure. And it would have been um, absolutely past the point if I would not have looked, or we would have not looked into coal mine closure as well, which we did. Um, so uh, the answer is uh, yes, absolutely. We have the um, we have procedures like the German procedures here in place, yeah, with the operating plans and the, the the closure operating plan, and we know what they look like. We can adapt the structure of these closure operating plans and use um, maybe set up a demo um, uh, with with one publicly available plan, as as we did with the Norseman project. We decided on Western Australia, so it's more international at the moment, but we could do the same thing for, for the coal mines here. That is absolutely no problem. And um, uh, yes, coal mines have a long history, yeah, and that makes um, it all the more important to get into it now <laughs> and um, start doing it now um, so that in future, in the next, uh, I don't know, 10 to 20 years, um, where we're phasing out coal, that we get these systems set up with all the relevant information um, that one needs to get coal mine closure right. Yeah, thank you, Philippe. Uh, there are some questions in the in the chat. Let me see. Mm. How can I get this larger? Uh, yes. Do you, Gael, Gael, can you see that? Yes, it is, it is a question about uh, um, what what are the main uh, information uh, to be monitored uh, for the closer planning? What is the most important uh, things that you, you, you have to monitor? Uh, and, and create the, the most uh, the, what uh, the, the most quantity of data uh, uh, because you have to to uh, to manage uh, the closure for a long period of, of time. So you have a, a huge quantity of data, which are the most important data. So uh, if I can answer this, so it's not a really a, an issue because you have a a database uh, behind the, 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 the software so we can manage any data you want or not it is not a problem of quantity of data and regarding what is the most important <laughs> once it depends of on your, your on your sites it depends uh, of course it will be a lot about the, the, the waste mining waste management because of course it, it, if in some case uh, the, the management of the, the mining waste can we can consider that will 50 half of your cost will be linked to the, 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 the management of your waste in a way or in another, on a, on a, in another way. So of course, uh, uh, under you will have a lot of data regarding the monitoring of this uh, of this mi mining waste. But it will be a lot about, of course, the monitoring of the uh, of the of the water of the contamination potential contamination of soils and sediment water. So. It's uh, not easy to answer this question because, uh, and the uh, and the social aspect also will be so so important, uh, and more and more important in now and in in the future because you have to uh, uh, keep all the information regarding all the interaction with population and stakeholders which are potentially impacted by the the mining operation to be sure that you the mining company is aware of. Uh, what they need, what they want, and they, that they respect all the previous engagement that were decided during the 
the construction uh, of the project during the feasibility study and uh, so so uh, let's say that thanks to Clozomatic with these tools it is easy to, to be sure that you are not forgetting something that you have an easy way to to, to trust everything uh, uh, with a fast view on all, all this aspect to be sure that uh, okay everything is uh, is in control on the so that, that's it for so so I hope uh, that my answer is, is is enough. It was a quite broad question. Anything to add, Philip? Oh. Well, yes. I mean, um, in in a sense, I have I have to add on to that, um, meaning that is that is perfectly correct. Yeah, um, but I would also like to say that we can provide in closure matic um, the, the, the full suite yeah but we can also focus on specific aspects for instance um, you can you can set closure matic up on only the costing aspect if that is desirable yeah um, for let's say a research project yeah um, so you want to um, you've got you've got a larger research project ongoing and you want to investigate all these mine closure costs coming up and, and compare them with each other yes you can you can focus on the uh, closure aspect uh, on the, the costing aspect or you can focus on the uh, social aspect as well um, so um, yeah we can provide as shown um, and that is the idea of getting mine closure right is to have your own comprehensive in-house closure plan but um i guess i'm just trying to open the door to a to another application of uh closure matic if you are interested in a specific question and you want to manage that as well um it can be set up in that way as well so if yeah, the answer is a particular case okay the most important important thing for me as a customer because i'm a i don't know university or whatever is the um uh, the social aspect then we can set up it being focused on social aspects if i may may add here on on what gail said that uh, the mine waste management is probably it's oftentimes like like gail said it's the most most important and as these uh, mine waste facilities can be closed like stage wise so you can learn learn from those closure efforts and your your first trials and you can actually make field trials and get some data and learn about those things but one aspect that is fairly difficult to learn about uh, in advance is this um, mine water rebound after you stop pumping and dewatering and what happens then but i think this uh, the whole paradigm of trying to learn about your site little by little over the years. I think software like Closure-Matic with its uh, sections and domains and actions uh, probably can, can guide you to include actions that uh, the aim of which is to learn more about your site. Otherwise, especially for the, for the um, uh, water level rebound, you are not very well equipped when the time comes to switch off the pumps. So, so, so this is probably a topic where you need to make deliberate efforts to to reduce the risks and the unknowns. Yeah, that was my ten cents. So, in addition to to the wastes, maybe that thing. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for. And we have or, another question from uh, Neriman Other, uh, it, it's about the, the regulation and the, the fact that uh, in, in areas, uh, you can have some countries where, where the mine regulation is not so strict and, uh, uh, and uh, so what's the point of using these tools if you, you don't really need, need, need it on, need so, so, so much? Uh, functionalities but in fact uh, these tools is also um, very useful for internal um, audit and internal communication for our for internal stakeholders because using these tools you have a very clear view of where you are regarding the closure 
uh, where you are regarding your cost, your, uh, your, your action. So it's an easy way uh, to, uh, uh, for the also financial uh, reason to be able, you are able to uh, every year, every six months, every month, to have a clear view of your your, your situation. So, so, uh, so of course, it's very useful internally, also. Yes, and of yes, course, yes, it's I actually have... oftentimes, yeah, the other way around. That if if you are operating in in a country where the local legislation and compliance monitoring is weak and you have your uh, international and institutional investors. So you actually need to spend even more money to prove to them that you are doing the right thing. So I think this is the, it's a good tool in that respect. Yeah, because when you see that where, where the investment money is going at the moment, it's all about sustainability and sustainable investments. And so, I think. And then, it cannot be the, the goal of any country or mining operation to um, to to have a, a poor legislation on, on mine closure and to keep it like that. Um, the future has to be um, in a way that uh, um, uh, the, the conditions are as such that um, mining uh, leaves a positive benefit. And for that you need on the one hand legislation regulations and on the other hand you will need um, strong corporate um, own policies because um, every mining company would like to keep a reputation as being a good neighbor uh, the social license to operate part i think is very important there yeah, okay then there's... Got... no yeah, i've got another question from uh, rina makala how long time does it take to build up a site-related closomatic database and what kind of costs are related to the development work? Time and money, guys. I've, 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 got, an, I've got a bit of experience in um, setting up uh, demos. <laughs> um, it ultimately depends on your site. Yeah, and, uh, I mean, that, that needs to be looked at a bit in, in detail. So, um, I can only encourage you uh, at this point in this forum as well, can only encourage you then to get in contact to one of us um, and we'll discuss it a bit more in a, in a, in a closed room um, and then uh, we can uh, come up with, with pricing because mm -hmm. there's so many individual aspects to consider at this point. Yeah. But what, what, what we can say, as uh, Tommy said uh, during uh, its presentation or, or uh, even after, if we have something like 200 templates, so, so we, I think we can adapt already, uh, adapt to 90% uh, of the different set situation using the templates we already have. After, if we, have, we need to create specific templates, it will be mm -hmm. something like 10, 15 templates. So it's quite, 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 quite fast. And after regarding the, uh, the populate, how to populate the database and how to populate and to, to put the information, after it's a, I say it's the same because if you do it uh, in a Word document and, and you have to redo your Word document uh, every three or every five years, here's the difference. You put the same uh, effort, but only once. After it's, uh, you only have to adapt uh, your text regarding to the evolution of your mining site, and you you export and uh, your document in a Word or PDF, and you you you. Uh, so after when it's done, it's done. It's only uh, you you will uh, you you won't spend more uh, effort in the uh, creation i think compared to a word document and after you will uh, gain a lot of time because you will mm -hmm. only have to adapt yeah so in short um the price will be very fair and will be quick <laughs> i think these are these are this is a good point we are running out of time we have three minutes three minutes left so i think I can, I can make myself presenter and show my. Ah. Yes, the screen. So some closing remarks. 
first of all, of course, I would like to thank thank EIT EIT for the funding funding of the project. I think from our behalf, <clears throat> it's it's gone quite well. I have had pleasure to work with people from EIT. We had good support from them, and and also I would like to thank thank our project group. It has been amazing amazing journey for four years and hopefully this is only the beginning of this good cooperation and lastly i would like to wish all of you to have a nice day and please be in, in touch with us there's no no money involved when you call us or be in contact so we we are glad to hear your opinions and discuss more about your possible sites. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you all. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you all. Bye.